So you want that your loaves look like this one, but instead they look like this. Stay watching this video and I'll show you how. Good Morgan and welcome to my channel. Everyone loves to bake bread. So what do we do? Well, first we choose a recipe. Here in the channel there are many recipes for you to choose from. Then we start kneading. We let it ferment. We shape the loaf. And then we end with this loaf ready to be baked. But how do we bake a bread? Good question, Gluten. We bake the bread in our oven. Come with me. So here is my oven. It's like a home oven, which is preheated at 482 degrees Fahrenheit. It is heated on the top and on the bottom too. And the fan is on. So let's bake the bread. Let's slash it and into the oven. May the gluten be with it. 40 minutes and let's see what happens. Okay, bread is ready. What? What the f Okay, here is the loaf. So let's check our bread. What happened? It's hot. It looks like it's already cooked and it's light, but, but it doesn't look like a bread from a bakery, right? I cut it here, this was a slash and it didn't open and it also broke here on the top. A little bit ugly, right? So gluten, what happened in the oven? Okay, let's analyze what happened to this bread. First of all, this is a good piece of bread, a good loaf. It is already cooked. And of course, this is going to be my tomorrow's breakfast. The thing is that the bread, which was perfectly fermented, today we're not talking about fermentation, we're just talking about baking the oven. And the problem was that the oven was too hot and too dry. So the outside of the bread, which is the crust, immediately got dry and cooked and it couldn't open. So here you see the slash that I did. There's no ear, nothing happened, it did not open. And then, because it was still raw on the inside and wanted to grow full of gases, and he managed his way to make a crack here on top of the loaf. So that's what happened. So it was full of power and energy on the inside, and now the outside was already cooked and closed. So it had to find his way and open here. But the loaf, it's okay. We're just talking about baking. This bread is a good piece of bread. And as I said, tomorrow is going to be my breakfast. But don't worry, because I have the solution. Did I say that? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, with you, H2O, also known as water. So if on one side we have water and on the other side we have a hot oven, what do we have? What did they say? What? Ah, good. We have steam. So what does this steam do in the oven? The main and most important thing is to keep the loaf during the baking process moist. We've seen in the first loaf that it got dry immediately and there was no ear and it didn't look that good. But then, if we add some water into the oven, the moment that we're putting the bread inside, this water will evaporate and maintain the crust still moist. And this will let the loaf grow and make this beautiful ear that we all love. Okay, now it's time to bake the second loaf. We'll do just one adjustment. Temperature is okay, the same, but we'll change. We'll stop the fan and put only heat on top on the bottom. No wind. And another thing, we have this tray on the bottom of the oven in which I'll put some water in the moment I'll put the bread in the oven. Let's go. Time for the water. Twenty minutes with steam, and then another twenty minutes more without steam. 
We're about two minutes to end the first part of the cooking process, which steam. Now I'll open the door, let the steam get out if there's still any, and then I'll put another 20 minutes more to let the baking finish. We're two minutes about to take the bread out of the oven. I don't want to spoil it, but it looks, uh, it doesn't look too much. Mm -hmm. And here is the second loaf. <laughs> Told you so. Whoa, nice piece of bread. It's whole, it's really, really hot. And check this ear. Incredible, big, incredible, gorgeous. The color is totally different as the first one. Really golden, beautiful. We nailed it. Let's continue. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oof. All right, time to move on and bake the third bread. We've seen that using steam in baking process really works. It was a totally different, the second loaf from the first one. We had this beautiful ear, also the color changed a lot. So now we'll be using the same water that evaporates from the raw loaf and then it will keep this crust moist during the first part of the cooking process. So then after 20 minutes I remove the lid and let it cook as the one that we've seen before. So let's check this method too. Okay so let's open this up. It's really hot and heavy. Time to bake. Okay, Dutch oven in the oven, same temperature and 20 minutes. I'll see you in 20 minutes. Are you lost with all the sourdough bread recipes that you find on the internet? Would you like to learn all the tips and tricks to make your own sourdough bread at home? Then I have the solution. I have designed the perfect masterclass of sourdough bread just made for you. By clicking the link on the description, you will learn how to make and take care of your sourdough starter how to knead, shape, ferment, and bake your sourdough bread, how to use and read the baker's percentage, all the basic techniques to bake like a pro at home, and how to read and understand your dough. Don't miss out on it and click the link on the description right now. And now the third method, which is almost the same as that Dutch oven, instead it's on a baking bag, which is really light and it's not hot as the Dutch oven. We'll put the bread inside the bag. The steam that is coming out of the oven will stay inside the bag and let it rise and grow as we've seen before. Okay, time to bake. And as we did with the Dutch oven, the same time, same temperature, and in 20 minutes, I remove the bag. Oh, okay, it's about to take the bread, which was in the Dutch oven and in the bag. So here are the two loaves, and as I told you, it's the same method. So tell me which one was baked in the Dutch oven and which one was baked in the bag. Okay, just to let you know, this one was baked in the Dutch oven and this one in the bag. And as you see, both methods were the same. The dough looks 
almost the same one. Really light, nice color, nice ear, the same here too. Ah, it's really, really hot. So it's a nice method and it's my favorite. And now out of the box, the last method, which is the papillot. I've never done this method. This is the first time that I'm doing this live. And the thing is, try to emulate the same thing that we did with the Dutch oven and the bag to retain those gases that steam inside the papillot and see if we can let the bread rise and open. Time to bake. Okay, same temperature, the oven as usual, and let's go. So we'll see what happens in 20 minutes. It's about to sound the bell, and we are going to open the mysterious method, the papillot method. Is it going to work? Okay. Last minute, I'm gonna take out the last bread of the video. Okay, let's try with this one, right? Okay, that never happened. I'm just a baker, not a basketball player. Okay, so finally here's the loaf after all the fighting. And it's not that bad. As you can see, there's a small ear here on top of it, so it tried to open, but at the same time this papillot just smash it. It's a little bit tall and not that wide. I think that the next time I try this papillot method, a little bit more better. Maybe you can try it at home and then tell me how did it go to you. Let's check all the breads, all right? So here we have the five loaves already baked. Here in the middle are the three ones that were baked with steam. On my left side, here's the loaf without steam. Direct steam method in the oven. Dutch oven. Baking bag and papillot method. So now, at the end of the video, and I know that you want it, I'm going to slice two breads, the one done without steam and the one done with direct steam, and to check their crumb if there is something else to see. Now the moment of truth. So, let me see. <laughs> so as you can see, using steam in the cooking process really changes the crumb. In this case, the one without steam, you have a more dense, not that compact, it's airy too, but it's more regular crumb. But when you let the loaf expand freely with the steam inside the oven, the crumb is totally different. So there are many other variables that could affect the loaf, of course, as such as the way that you shape the bread, the fermentation, many things. In this experiment, I was just checking the use of uh, steam or not to steam, <laughs> that's the question. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please write me some comments about this new experiment and I'll see you on the next one. Luton Morgan, everyone. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more about sourdough bread and sourdough starter, I encourage you to check the link on the description. And remember, this masterclass was specially designed for you.